easy to do while we're live. Okay. There we go. Something about they're having urges in there. <laughs> Hi, Mama D. Hi, everybody. We got to learn how to send Mama G a link. Just let her come in the back room. Okay. Let's do that. Somebody asked us for jewelry boxes yesterday, so we'll do those first. I do remember that. I think it was the other day. Hey, everybody. Will the guest please, speaker please stand up? Please stand up. Hi, everybody. We are getting ready to go live. Well, we are live. Like, you know, we're getting ready to go to the crazy farm. Yeah, I got to figure out how to do it. I don't know how to. Let me see. Go into StreamYard. Go to banners, click that one. Uh, invite. Oh, that's how you would do it. Okay. So next week I will invite you in because I will be able to figure it out and be on my phone doing it because I can't do it from here because this is not hooked up. <laughs> hey everybody. Hi Dom. Prime Prime Treasure Hustler. Hunter. Hustler, Hunter. It's all the same thing. He's both. Okay. So first item up is going to be all these jewelry boxes. Somebody asked us for jewelry boxes. Wasn't there more? There is. Oh. Do I have you on StreamYard and not on YouTube? That's why. Got it. Somebody had said something about, please bring jewelry boxes. And we had some from one of the estates. Ooh. I don't think there's anything in them. but So you're going to get all these jewelry boxes, like little ring boxes with the inserts and everything in them uh do a 15 dollars start they're just for jewelry if you have like nice rings so like velvet boxes some of them have the inserts some of them do not here's a so i can't open it okay i can't open it my patience is not long enough to do some of them Fifteen dollars. So there's a bunch. I don't know. Pam brought them up a little bit earlier, and she's like, "Do you want these?" And I was like, "Yes." Yeah. Somebody asked us for ring boxes the other day, so all these little cardboardy boxes, and this one I'm not going to bother showing you because they're just little cardboardy boxes. Unless you guys need to see them. Here's a bigger one. Probably held a bracelet or something. Okay, these are more cardboard jewelry boxes in here. Here's another felt one from Hess's. That probably had a necklace in it. Another felter velvet one. Hey, it had a 14 karat gold something in it for $199. Another one, 14 karat gold post. Your earrings. Royal gems. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Breaker said Brian's going to find the gold ring. I already did open but, you know. Pam said she... No, I'm showing them when all's there. We want the people to see what they're buying. Jeez, fine. Okay, fine. You guys don't get to look at it then. I'll teach Pam a lesson or two. I'll, I'll sell that gold ring and not charge anything for it. 
Okay, so this whole box is full of those, and this box has other jewelry boxes in it. But it should be pretty light to ship. I was trying to see if there was like any watch boxes or anything, because sometimes those help. Ah, look, see? There's a bull of a watch box. So if you have an old bull of a, this helps the value of your watch. See? And it even has paperwork inside. See, I'm just trying to be helpful. And if you guys saw the abuse I take daily, both of my wives here, my, my work wife's husband here. Jeez. No, no, it is not. Here's a, here's a, just a red lid for a Seiko watch box, but then here's a Seiko watch box. So this is probably okay. Useful if you have a Seiko watch. So that's what you get in this lot. Okay, so we have $15 with Scotty for all of the jewelry boxes. Going once, going twice. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Brian's in a rush today. Uh -huh. Selling. <laughs> Okay, so we have 15. We're looking for 17 or better. Doing the auctions, I always get like all hot and everything because I'm like. Because <laughs> he's running around. <laughs> I have to take off my sweater. Put back on my pants. <laughs> put on my one shoe. The other one's out in the dumpster. I'm not going for that one this time. <laughs> I don't care what they tell me. Uh. This is how we are before we start drinking. <laughs> Imagine what the show would be like if we were drinking. <laughs> Hi, Sugar Plum. How you doing? Scotty. Nice bye, Scotty. Yeah, a lot of people can use ring boxes and jewelry boxes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got some, Pam's got some fabric over here. So let's do that. Yeah. Can hot tub parties with no hot tub. It's great. Okay, so this is a big tablecloth uh, from some foreign country because I can't read any of it. Bohij. Triglav. It's actually very cool. It's a nice big. Whatever that is, Job, Joblana. But this is cool, look. There's a skeleton of the queen. Pam's going to be like, I didn't see the skeleton. <laughs> ah. Going to be wearing that all day. <laughs> Another vintage piece of fabric, textile tablecloth. A white on white with punched through holes or cut holes. I don't know what you call it. This is large. Piece of Quaker lace here. Marby, hang on. I I can check for you, Marby. Here's another large tablecloth. We're going to do a $10 start on all the fabric. Here is a, another Christmassy tablecloth with like Christmas balls and holly and stuff like that. This is a very large banquet size. It's another Christmas tablecloth. This is all like embroidered, raised. Some crocheted or knitted um, heating pads. Another large tablecloth, a scalloped edge, and some white on white embroidery. Another piece of lace. 
and then a piece of cotton floral print. Whew. That was like work. Claudia, you are registered. You don't have to register each time, hon. Once you guys are registered once, you are registered forever. Unless you don't pay your bill and then I unregister you. But you are registered. I am just looking for Marbies. I'm looking for your email now for your registration. So a lot of fabric, a lot of tablecloths. And here you go. Lehigh Valley Motor Club. Triple A. Some kind of bag. Um, oh, this one should be good. This is a good sellable one. Pan Am for Pan American Airlines travel bag. You get that with it. It's probably like 70s. Okay, so cotton floral print, I'll start folding them and putting them back in the tray while you guys are bidding. A big piece of like Quaker lace, tablecloth or curtain or something, pretty large. The Pan Am travel bag, which is good. This is a white on white, large tablecloth, probably like banquet size with a scalloped edge and then like little embroidery embellishments on it. The Christmas color hot pads, another tablecloth with raised hollies and colorful print, a giant size embroidered tablecloth with red scalloped edge, also Christmassy, that looks like it's old stock, still got some stiffness to it. Here is a, another Christmas tablecloth. Very beautiful, ornate design work. It's probably for like an eight foot table. Another piece of the Quaker lace type tablecloth or curtain. I haven't opened these up completely, so this is another piece that has shiny thread going through it. This is a this is pretty stiff. Um, so I don't know if this is one piece. If it is, it's very large. You can see all the punch work or cutouts, or I don't know what you call them. I'm not girly, so it's hard for me to to know my fabrics as well as I should. And then this is the awesome one with like the foreign state or country tablecloth. But I just think it's awesome because there's a skeleton walking with like royalty. So that's pretty awesome to me. And that's a large tablecloth as well. And then the two travel bags. What was her, just what's her first name? Barbie, he's looking for what your first name is. So he can find you. Yeah, I have like a... A lot, a lot of restrictions. We're at 32 with 
Let's see if I did this right. Uh, nope, that's somebody trying to sell me a warehouse full of go. stuff. Oh, yep, we got that one. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. And then Erich. Let's see. Erich G. Dominic. Where is your YouTube name? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Laughing Picker. If you can make a comment in the chat, we can give you a wrench so that you are able to bid. Sorry if I'm a little bit slow today, guys. My wife roofied me last night. She got upset because I wouldn't be quiet. She's like, here, take half of this pill. And I was like, oh, sweet. Let's see how far the rabbit hole goes. And she's like, that's not the rabbit hole. Stop touching it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> See, told you she can't take give me pills at night. We have issues the next day. On top of my other issues. <laughs> okay, we're going twice. Storage units. Thirty six to Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Congratulations. I smell chocolate. I love chocolate. You have hot chocolate up here? I can get any. Oh, they're gonna love these. How about vintage clowns? These are like 1970s clown mirrors. Look at this. It's this awesome. It's got like a yo-yo. It's even got like old paper and stuff in it. I just started to it yeah. It needs to be cleaned off, but look at the clown. With the old wooden yo-yo. That's awesome. Uh, 15 bucks for the three. There's three of these. So there's a scary clown. Let's see, this one says Sorel or something like that. Yeah. Not that I can read that. Sorel. But another clown mirror. Just remind me of, like the old mirrors that you see when at the, uh, at, like the fair or amusement parks. And the third clown. All in the boxes. Oh, this one got a this one got a little cracky down there, right there. But you don't get bad luck from that. It wasn't your fault. They do need to be cleaned. They have been sitting in somebody's house since the seventies, maybe even sixties. What'd they say? Okay, and every clown needs to work on Fifth Avenue. So this is an old Fifth Avenue candy box. Isn't that cool? 24 candy bars for five cents per candy bar. That, that's awesome. I didn't know Luden's made Fifth Avenue candy bars. I thought Luden's made cough drops. So super neat. 88 cents, you could have bought a full box of 24. But 88 cents for 24 full-size candy bars. That tells you how old that candy bar box is. Some old advertising boxes bring really good money, guys. So $15 start. So far, nothing. Commonwealth Flipper. <laughs> Yep, bitter pass, guys. Bitter pass. We got 15 with Kenneth on the three clown mirrors. 
and the Fifth Avenue Candy Bar Box. So we are looking for 17. We have 15 with Kenneth. Looking for 17. And this is a bowler for you guys. Whenever you see old candy boxes and old cereal boxes. The cereal boxes are pre like 80s like Quisp, cereal, stuff like that. If they're still full and have like the premium rings in them, they can bring thousands. If they're empty, they bring good money too. This Bolo is really dollar sign. Buy one, list one. Bolo. So we have 17 with uh, Jill. We have 20 with Kenneth. We're looking for 22. 22 with Jill. So now we're looking for 24. I actually got into a house years ago, Spencer, that had like original cereal boxes from the 70s and 80s. So it had cereal in them. My parents were going to throw them out because they were cleaning out the house. 25 with Kenneth. I sold one Quiz box out of that house for 2300 bucks. So we're at $25 with Kenneth. Thank you, Ken. Jill is out. Hi, Jim Epsell. So you get the three scary clown mirrors and the Fifth Avenue candy bar box when candy bars were five cents a candy bar. Matt Conlon is out. Let's see up there. Okay. Going twice. Sold, sold, sold. $25 to Kenneth Rosenberg. Congratulations, Kenneth. Okay, I'm going to do this. I don't know where this even came from, but hey, let's do it anyway. It's hard to. Definitely. I don't know. Okay, here's some kind of like little painting. I don't know. Pam put it on the table. Uh, I'm not sure if it's oil on canvas. It looks like it's canvas. But I don't feel the bumpies, so I don't know. But beautiful frame, wooden frame. In the back, it has Willis Gallery from New York. I don't see any name on it, but it could be underneath the frame. I was trying to see if there was any give to it, but this is definitely the original frame that it was in. I have no clue where this came from. But by the backing of it, I would say this is probably 60s Let's see. or earlier. Yeah, look at the nail. Look, I always tear the paper off the back. Sorry, guys. I just do. I know. Somebody's going to be like, no, don't do that. I'll leave the gallery part of it. Don't worry. Ah, see on the back, ten bucks. Yeah, ten bucks. So it's going to cost us ten or fifteen to ship it. It says worth W E R T H. So I don't know if that's the artist or whatnot. But it is a very pretty wooden frame. It's inset, probably about an inch, inch and a half. It's a beautiful sailing ship. Can put it over here, so we must sell it. <laughs> okay, we got 10 with Kyle Elliott. Nah, the paper never really matters. But I did leave the, uh, the gallery part of the paper on the back so that if somebody wants to look it up, they can right there. But if I wouldn't have did that, we wouldn't have knew it's by worth. And you wouldn't be able to see what kind of nails are in it and tell age. The frame's awesome. It's a nice size. Where's, uh, where's my tape measure? It's in here. It's about 13 inches by 11 and a half inches. Nice piece. 
So we have 10 with Kyle. We're looking for 12. 10 with Kyle, looking for 12. $2 increments. Yep, Scotty, there's definitely staples holding the canvas on. See? And then there's wooden nails, or not wooden nails, but nails holding the inner frame into the bigger frame. So my guess is probably 60s or 70s. I don't think it's super old. Yep, you just messed them, Crispy. Yep. See, that's what happens, Chris Sheridan, when you're up all night long, pouring around on YouTube. You sleep in too late and you miss Mr. Buys a lot of talk shows. But since you're here, Crispy Toys, we will make a tray lot of poker chips. I'll make you guys a tray lot of poker chips right after I put up the next lot. And then we're going to have some movie posters. I have a few toys. Looks like I have a lot of toys. We have some sports cards ready. Bother me. Uh, stop touching everything, Brian. <laughs> yeah, they've used staples in the sixties. I have unopened boxes in nineteen thirties staples. You said you needed more <laughs> stuff, Crispy. That's what you said. I heard you. <laughs> okay, sold. Kyle Elliott, $14. There you go. See? Get something else out of the warehouse that you wanted out of the warehouse. Okay, so let's do some toy stuff. Yeah. Tray. So whoever has kids or whatever, a single du duvet, duvet. I can say it all kinds of different ways. Duvet. <laughs> so it's a single duvet set of Moshi monsters. It's still sealed in the package. Um... Here is a Famous Covers Aunt May 8-inch action figure from Toy Biz. And this is from Amazing Spider-Man 115 cover. $10 start. $10 start. While Antique Center is still in Allentown, if that's what he means. All this stuff. What's all this stuff? Okay. Well, then we'll sell it. Statues, like marble statues? Cool. Ooh, this is a good toy. This is, this is a, it's actually a very, very good toy online. Okay. While you guys are bidding on that, I'm grabbing poker chips. Because I haven't done poker chips. Well, I walked past that and I saw it was it was there. So. He very rarely runs what? Oh. Yeah, there's never any telling what I'm going to 
side to grab. I like grabbing these 1930s and 40s poker chips. In that giant collection I had. Hopefully we got our buyers for today. So I'm not even counting them. I'm just tossing them in here. Eh, should be 50, 60, something like that. Okay. Sorry. I was just grabbing random stuff. That way I don't know what it's worth and then it doesn't hurt so bad when I sell it. A giant casino collection. <laughs> Kenneth in F25. I was like, wow, that's a really high bit there. Kenneth. <laughs> Kenneth wants that Aunt May. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Winner. You can bid, Jim. Absolutely, Jim Episode. <laughs> I think he's asking if he can bid on poker chips. Uh, not yet. <laughs> yeah, when I put them up, ah, you can bid on them. I don't care. It's got to be David. He ate lunch. <laughs> Why did somebody die in the bathroom? <laughs> Your husband. 27 with KJ. And I'm going to lead you guys up to it. We're going to sell the Barbie Mustang that expands from a two to a four seater. Do your research. It's a really, really good piece in the original box. It's on the shelf. It's on the table. <laughs> Here's my first TikTok video, guys. It's, it's my hand doing the wave. Put that on Tiki Talk. KJ is out. Okay. I believe it was just between KJ and Ken, right? I think so, yeah. Okay, Mama G, just call it. If it's just between two of them, that way other people will make sure that they jump in so we at least know they have an interest. Sold, sold, sold. Ken for 30 bucks. Sold, sold, sold. Okay. I know Evil Lenny's going to be very upset because he's not here when I'm doing this. And this is probably crazy of me to do. But here's a whole bunch of poker chips. Um, I don't know every single one of them. But you can see Mississippi, DeSoto County Kennel Club. So this is like a 1940s chip would be my guess. 
and they originally had 20 bucks on that one. Here's Arkansas Blakefish Lake Club. That one, here's another one of the Kennel Club ones. I'm just showing you the ones that are in the sleeves first. There's another Blakefish Lake. Uh, so there's a website out there, and it's like a chip guide, so you can actually just type in the names on the chips, like this DUC or DUG, and it will find all of the clubs that use that specific name for their club. Uh, here's a bunch of orangish red early B chips. I think these were for Benyons maybe or the roulette chips or something along those lines. So there's a bunch of those. There's a couple black ones. Here is a, a bluish DUC, another DUC of that. Here's B and D club. So most of these are for underground uh, casinos and stuff like that. They got shut down pretty quickly. Or B and D club. Also, here are RPF. Here's just like five RPF chips, or RRF. Sorry, RRF. Dyslexic. Dyslexic. After my wife refused me. Rising Sun was a casino. Uh, I don't know what the little star flaky things are. Couple of those. Here's another Rising Sun chip. I just happen to know that's a casino because I've sold some of these in the past. Here's the Brighton Fun Night chip for two dollars and fifty cents. Um, here's some Roulette number nine. Not sure what bar or club or underground illegal gambling casino that that was from. J and L Club. HHM. Here's another Rising Sun chip. I think the Rising Sun chip was a was a colored only club casino, if I remember right. I know there's some people in the room who would know HED or HCO. It's one of those HCO or HCD. Um, we have a two dollar chip for O and E House in Reno, Nevada. Another B and D club chip. Princess Cruise chip for a dollar. A Harrah's Trump Plaza hundred dollar chip. HHM. I think we had some other ones of those, but different color. Uh, here's two of this one, the Brighton five dollar chips. Those go up there. Another one of those HHM chips. Here is the Embajor L. Image door, so this is probably from Cuba or Puerto Rico. Terry's Place, this was a 1940s club that got shut down. Those are popular chip. There's another J&L. Here are a bunch of ones with just H on them. Here are HCD, again, a different color of that HCD, so it would have been a different denomination. These two are blanks with mermaids on them. Here's a Harrah's 10 cent chip from Reno. Imagine when, when it was 10 cents. Peak and Bohart, so that's a, probably a pretty rare chip. This is a newer one, 24-hour gaming resorts casino, where it all began. Here's RPPF, and here is a DW5 cent chip that tells you how old like some of these chips are. And they date back, I think, the 30s all the way through probably the 70s, 80s. And here's a box. The, these are newer wooden chips. I just kind of threw this in. These are from 2003 Tropicana for the, uh, for the chip, uh, casino chip trading club convention 2003 the guy i got these from was a member and traded chips and collected chips and sold chips and helped write the book so these have a pinwheel i'm not sure what they're from but there's a bunch of those um uh, 
here's gray, there's a dark gray, light grays, and then there's a beige color. So I'm just trying to give you guys a quick count. So there's 40 there. Not counting the wooden ones. Pretty big lot. If you guys watch my What's Sold videos, you'll see that we sell quite a few. But then we got to a point where we started listing other stuff, and this collection kind of got put to the side. So it looks like there's definitely over 100 pieces total in this lot. So over 100 pieces in this lot of casino chips and illegal gambling club chips. Which is pretty awesome. And I see the glass The what chips? Flaky. Is that a I only saw one of those. This one? I think that's the one he's asking about. This one, Scotty? There's only one of the or two of those. The rising sun is probably the oldest one. No, that's this one. And then there's a bunch of the ones with the pinwheels on them. So over a hundred chips total. It was a, it was a hundred pieces, and then not counting the wooden 2003 Tarpicana convention chips. So. And there are chips that I've gotten into the mid four and five hundred dollar range for from this collection so far. I really should do the rest of these. One eighty with Mac on. Hello, Courtney. Courtney from Bolo Buddies. If you guys don't watch, she has a show on Wednesdays. I believe it's Wednesdays, where she does bolos, live bolos with everybody to show things that you've had. So we have Swamp Picker in at... I, I did saw Swamp Picker first right now. Matt was in at 200 first? Yep, we have Matt in at 200. So over 100 pieces dating 30s, 40s, 50s, up into the 70s, and then this one is new, new. 2000s. But these are all older clay-based chips. The Brighton, Ten Cent Harris Reno, Hundred Dollar Trump. Okay, we have Matt at two hundred. Yep, Matt Conlin is Jackass Retro on YouTube. He has interesting listing days where you guys can watch him list. And he has some really cool videos. I used to love his intro.
Hello, Chris Chatworth. See, I remembered. I remembered <laughs> who it was. You are always welcome, Courtney. Courtney is a staple in the community with great information. Sold, sold, sold. Sold, 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 sold. $200. Okay, let's do this. So this is a vintage Barbie car. This is from 1994. This is the Barbie Mustang. It is old stock. Let's see right here. Here's the windshield. There are the hubcaps. All the stickers. All the other accessories are inside. It's never been played with. And it does expand, so it can be a four-seater or a two-seater. This is a really good Barbie piece. If you're a reseller online... And it is old stock, Barbie Mustang, expanding Mustang, $20 start. It has a little bit of weight to it, and it's obviously pretty large. Thanks. 22 inches long. Uh -huh. That beast treasure is in at 20? Yep, if, if this side wasn't unglued, it would be sealed product, but the side was unglued, so I just showed you the contents, but it is new old stock. It is actually a pretty hard-to-find piece for Barbie in the early 90s. <laughs> J-I-N at 30? Oh, no, Scotty, it wasn't sealed. I actually thought it was at first, like whenever I was moving it, but then I realized the flap was loose. What year, please? 1994. 50 in <laughs> with Chris. Okay, we have 50 with Chris. Pam keeps eating these damn Starbursts in front of me. I'm going to steal her bag of them. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris in at 50. And this is the one that expands, so it's a two-seater or a four-seater in old stock condition. Jay is out. Random Girl Jill is out. Okay, it looks like we just have Chris. Let's go ahead and start counting it down for Chris. I'm going to keep moving. I know people are going to look it up, and they're going to be like, uh-oh. Two-seater or four-seater. <laughs> it's for before you have the babies and then after you have them. <laughs> I wanted it I wanted it in black because I knew it would be bigger than right, like the black car. Because that was always a four-seater, the black Mustang one that they did. <laughs> I'm not sharing with him, Scotty. <laughs> He's mean to me. <laughs> she doesn't let me put my hand in her bag. 60 in with Chris. <laughs> There's you, Hello, Lenny. Lenny. You just missed all the casino chips. We just did a big tray lot of casino chips. Here, I just want to. I'm going to tease Lenny. Look, Lenny, we just sold this tray lot. I don't know. I ignore Facebook. She's telling Mama G to read Facebook. Facebook sucks right now. I ignore bad news. I didn't like looking in the mirror in the morning.
Kyle. Kyle. Nice. Hey, KK. They're all doing it to him. <laughs> one for 20. No one wanted it. Look, we got our big spenders here. I'll 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 go over there and grab another tray. I'll make another tray. Sold, sold, sold. Chris. Sold sold to Chris Chatworth. Sixty bucks. Congratulations, Chris. Ooh, let's do whatever this big monstrosity box is. Not the one on top of it. I think the top top one is some kind of like statue. Yeah. Okay. So here's a big white box. Hey, can I have something to open it with? No. Okay. No Mystery knife. box. No knives for you. No knives for me. No, I'm not allowed to have scissors. Knives are fine. Okay, let's see what we got, guys. Ooh. Looks like a Magneto limited edition sculpture. Please read assembly instructions in full for Magneto sculpture. Certificate of Authenticity, Creative License, number 1272 of an edition of 3,500. Uh, it does have some weight to it, so it's going to be 30 bucks to start. It should be a little bit more. But I will show you guys the base does have a broken piece. I can see it right here. Right there on the base is a broken piece. It's a pretty clean break, but... I can see it right there, so I'm going to tell you that it's there. But Magneto is pretty neato. He's large. It is heavy. So this is Magneto sculpture. Like I said, the base does have that, that broken piece. It's there because it's still in the bag, but... I'm going to show it to you guys. So $30 start on the Magneto sculpture. So the paperwork, like I said, if you can re-glue that, that piece right there. Look, here's epoxy that they sent with it. That's really funny. So this would be the base, so like one of these pieces right here. Magneto is over 10 inches tall. Put his hands up. Put your hands up. Hands up. And it is cold cast porcelain. Yeah, 30 with Brian. Okay. Yeah. It's not a very good packaging design. I probably would have put cardboard between the two pieces. Ooh, you want to grab one of the other statues? That one? The G.I. Joe? The big one? Yeah, from like the 60s, the 60s G.I. Joe statues. Okay, looking for any advance on 30, 32 with Kenneth. Brian is out. Okay, let's start doing a countdown. We'll keep it moving. Hi, Dana. Oh, Lenny, you got your maps. Awesome. Looking for any advance, $32. We're going to go once. Make sure I turn him over.
I'm sure that once you get that epoxy on them, they look awesome. Okay, that one's sold, right? Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, I was moving it. Just remember that it does have that break on the base. It needs to be re-glued. Ken Rosenberry's out. Okay, let's start calling it down. But don't worry, Lenny, we're going to do another lot of casino chips today. We're going to do some awesome 1800s photography photo albums. Forty two with Marielle. Just remember Marielle, it is it does have a on the break on the base. I just want everybody to see that. The break right here. So it needs to be re glued right in there. Right there. So you can see you have to re glue that side. Cannonball. Do I have a cannonball here? Hmm. Who has a cannonball? Everly. Everly has cannonballs. I can get you a cannonball. Okay. So then we'll just go back to the original. I didn't think Mariel saw that it had that, so. So we'll just run it at 40, because I don't think Mariel saw that. Mariel, you did not know it was broke, so that's not a problem. Okay, so 40? Yep. So we'll sell it for 40 to Chris Law, because she knew about it. There we go. So 40. 40 to Chris Law. Okay. Yep. No worries. Okay, we're going to do another statue. Okay. So this is a cold cast porcelain statue. So if you know vintage G.I. Joe's, like 1964, this would have been the G.I. Joe astronaut, the 12-inch. Now, he has a space in his hand for a flag, but there was never a flag actually put into the boxes with them. So any of them you ever see will not have the flag. This is number 116 of only 400 made. They were made by Magic Productions Company. They were licensed for G.I. Joe. He is pretty heavy. He's, uh, let's get a weight on him real quick. He's about three pounds, not counting the packaging. So with a box and wrapping and stuff, he'll be about four pounds. So we're going to do $20 to start. It cost us at least that to get it to California. So, but what's cool is, like, if you look at them, they even put the scar on them, like all the American G.I. Joes had. It is the exact head mold for the Hasbro G.I. Joes from 1964. This is the astronaut. Brian Maroney in at 30. Okay. We have Brian in at 30. We have Jill comes in at 50. So we have random girl Jill in at $50. Brian in at 
Brian is out. And he measures, he is on like a, like a starship base. And every one of them is hand numbered. He is 12 inches tall total. And seven inches wide. Like I said, they, I guess they made them so that you could just put like one of those regular flags down in his hand. But everyone I've ever seen, none of them have ever had a flag. And this one is sealed. I unsealed it to show it to you guys. And I had, you know, original cases of these. These from 1996. Yep. Yeah, it was when they started reissuing all the 12 inch stuff. <laughs> you found some on Line Striker with flags? I've opened, I don't know, I probably had three cases of them, and I've sold all three cases except for the one I have right here that I pulled this one out of. And none of them had flags. Yeah. And if you look, there's not even anywhere in the box to hold a flag. Like, Number 116. So we're going once to Joe, we're going twice, we're at $50. Yeah, so my guess is people are just buying flags and putting them with them. Because there's definitely nowhere in the package to hold a flag. Sold, sold, sold. Congratulations, Jill. The way I know this is because this is the original case for them. Say it originally had four in it. Still has two in it. So if anybody else wants one for $50, just comment that you want one for $50. I have two more left. And then those can be yours. <laughs> Mr. Bizelot flag. So I have two more of those. If anybody else wants one for $50 more dollars, just comment that you want one for 50 bucks and I will sell it to you for that price. But I'm going to pull these off the table and get them out of the way. But that is the original case. Okay, so this is a die cast collectible thing from V's Collectibles. This was a diorama store display for Linux furnaces. And they had their own Ertl trucks and stuff. And it would have had a barrel here, a barrel here like that. So that's like a diorama. But because it did originally go with Ertl trucks, didn't we have any of the, the larger ones? 
like a greenish color box, green and white. Pam's going to see if we have an Ertl truck to put with it, but I don't think we have any more from that particular company, from the Linux furnace company. So this will be a $20 start. I'm going to see if we can add a truck to it. But the barrels are there. Yeah. Doesn't matter anything that's of that size. Yeah. Oh, we're going to add two bucks, two trucks to it. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Whatever. You get a box in the box. So here, this would have been an Agway truck that would have been of the size that would have matched this diorama. When you pull the toy out, you set it on here and it is a locking coin bank. There are two of them. These are by Ertl Manufacturing Company. So, Liberty from Dyersville, Iowa. He's right over Unless Liberty is Ertl after work, certain date. And that's what you get. That's the original box behind it. Get both the trucks. Um, some of them used to. Let's see if this one has anywhere in the back for a light bulb. No, this one definitely did not because there's no cord. There's no light bulb. I did have another one that did light up, though. Hey, look. Is that what your husband just said? Yeah. <laughs> Not my fault you broke your JJ. <laughs> okay, we have twenty dollars with Kenneth Rosenberry. Hello, Blue Harvest Vintage Toys. Harry. Hello, Mountain Man Treasures. So we have twenty dollars with Kenneth Rosenberry. Yeah, it's probably going to cost me twenty-five to thirty bucks to ship it, but you know, I generally start everything out for free and just charge you for the shipping or what I think it is. Pam, she ran into a box with her box. So we're at twenty-two with Matt Conlin. You get the two diecast trucks and the original store display diorama for Linux Heating Company, and then the two trucks are from Agway. So we're at $22 with Matt Conlon for the three pieces. Looking for 24 or better. Oh, I will have, yeah, I'll ship foreign. You just have to pay the shipping then. <laughs> Matt Conlon's at 26. Okay. Harold came in. He said, who broke what? I came in at the wrong time. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. No, I will not kiss and make it better for you. Shut up. Do an auction. Ugh. That one box is a little squashed back there. <laughs> Only has clothes in, so it's okay. <laughs> That's going to leave a mark. Kenneth is out. So we're at $26 with Matt. Looking for 28 or better for the three pieces. And these are large die cast. That is, you know, it's probably six or eight inches in size. With the Agway bags on the back of it, it is a bank. So there's two of those. 28 or Hi, Steve. We got 102 in here. Do you guys want a big casino lot? Like a big casino lot? <laughs> like I'll do something crazy big casino lot? 
<laughs> you keep quiet over there, Harold. <laughs> How many lots are running in this one? In, this in my auction, we usually hit about 30 in three hours. Matthew Bailey says yes. I know Matt Conlon's in here. I believe Lenny is still here. Uh, Blue Harvest, no Star Wars today. Matt in that 30. So we're at thirty dollars on this entire lot. This is the original box in the back that the diorama goes into. Nope, KK, all out. I sold you guys all of the coins, or at least all of the coins that I found so far. We have the turn of the century photo albums. No, Shriker. <laughs> Not no. right now. Pam took all of those. I don't know what she's doing with them, but... <laughs> no, you sold those on here. Well, yeah, but you took the other ones. Mm -mm. Those ones that said, like, Edible Center. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. We have KJ in at 32. Yep, if you guys are in the lurking area and you want to register for the auction... Any big box PC games? No, J.I. don't have any more PC games that I know of, at least at this warehouse. Not right this second. You guys can just follow the yellow banner at the bottom of the auction screen. It gives you my email. Send me your info and then comment that you sent me a registration and we can give you a wrench so you can bid. Okay, we have KJ at 32. Let's go in once. Go in twice. Three times a lady. Dropping a barrel. I think those are wooden. Ooh, oh, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. That's lovely. It all fits inside of there. Can you call it diorama? Yeah, you just call it, just call it diecast trucks. Oh, that's awesome, Matt. Kyle's going to be 21 soon. You guys give him a good congratulations. 21? Holy crap. No, I, I don't really know how old he'll be. <laughs> like He's, he is relatively young. He's a young entrepreneur. Yeah. I think it'd be 32. That's about right. Okay, I'm going to have Pam show you this stuff here, guys. You won't be able to hear her because I have the microphone with me. You're just going to hold a couple of these up, show them to them. You're going to be here on camera digging in the box. No, not that one. I don't know if these are all the same. So that one is the 30 Chevy panel truck. And this is the 30 Chevy panel truck. So you're going to be buying all of these all together. These are Ertl. They are die cast. They are dime register banks. Those are original cases. Pam will give you a count. And I'm going to grab something for you guys that are here, that are ready to spend. Because I want part of my warehouse back. And this is going to hurt. Oh, good lord. That hurt. Yeah. Uh, this drawer hit me in the face. Good thing they didn't hurt anything valuable. 18. Okay, so you're getting 18 of the Ertl Diecast Dime Banks. $30 start. So it's definitely going to cost that to ship them because they are pretty heavy. So 
So we're getting a case and a half of original die cast dime banks. Savvy in at 35. I forgot how heavy that box was. Well, I thought it was like 30 or 40 pounds. It was like 100 to 110 pounds. Right at 37. And again at 40. Brian just had a heart attack. Live today. Jabby's treasures in at 45. So you're getting 18 trucks, all die cast, easy to list. But he's in at 50. Chris Chatworth in at 60. So 65 with Eddie's. Eighteen, 18 of them. Eighteen in the slot. That's all I found so far. Yeah, as you can see, this was an original case. Yep, let's go ahead and count her down. Get her done. We're going to try to set a new record today for how much I sell an item for. <laughs> we so. are not shipping that box, just so you know. No, we won't send the box. <laughs> because your packer will be sick that day. I'm not shipping nothing. 80 with KJ. So there are 18 total die cast dime banks. No, we haven't sent For any. Two, yeah, no, Matthew, I haven't <laughs> sent any of this week's invoices out. But everything that was paid for has been shipped. Yes. As of today, was everything from last week has shipped out. Yep. We do our auction Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so I try to combine them all for you guys. So Brian's going to stay here late tonight and send out invoices so I can ship your stuff tomorrow. <laughs> okay, it looks like Brian's going to stay here late tonight and <laughs> send out your invoices. <laughs> yes, because you have to because you're not coming in on time tomorrow. My boss says so. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have to. 85 with Matt Conlon. Oh, the small ones, Spencer, those are no problem. The big ones, those were not fun. Is that what I packed today? Yeah, yeah the three big sheets. Yeah, that kind of sucked. It's all right. The small and cut sheets are no big deal. Yeah. Those are easy. We've got plenty of boxes to hold really those. not that bad. We've packed worse. Yeah, that neon light, that neon beer oh, light that I had. That's horrible. That's what you That packed. took me like three hours. No, Scotty, there was no Monday auction. He meant Tuesday. <laughs> so we're at 85 with Matt Conlon. So it looks like it's just between KJ and Matt. Brian would love to do a Monday auction, but we cannot. Oh, I'd, I would be doing seven days a week if I could. But we cannot. I would give up eBay completely and just do auctions one day a week, every day a week. KJ's in at 90. I tried to do a night one, though. I think some people would really enjoy having an evening auction. There's so many other people selling at night that I try not to do that. 
When Brian moves, he's going to do auctions every day. <laughs> okay, so we got KJ at 90. Let's just go ahead and sell it. Let's call it. Call it, call it, call it. 18 trucks. $90. Congratulations. Here, let's do one photo album because I know I have some people here that have been waiting for this. There's only one over here on the table so far that I see that Pam gave me. It's really awesome, though. Look, look at the metal like fitting on the Victorian album. Here is the latch right here. It's probably 1880s, 1890s. The back of it had feet. So you could stand it. See, little feet. Okay, let's see what's inside. Oh, cover is detached. $20 start. Orange, New Jersey. I'm trying to see if there's any markings on the back of some of the photos. So there's one, two, three. Four, five, that's an awesome outfit. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That one was from Brooklyn. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. What the heck? Is it like a secret compartment in this thing? 19. I don't understand. This has a spring on it here. I wonder if this was like a gun book. If you look down inside, there's a spring. And back here, there's a hole... I wonder if this was like for a secret compartment in the bottom of the book. Maybe this is how you unlocked it or opened it. See that, Pam? And the last page is like this really thick wooden casing. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. No, they used to make gun books. And there is a little hole on that side. I'm so curious now. So, yeah, I don't know. So we're, we're going to say it was a hideaway book, but I'm not sure what the whole spring and mechanisms for on it, unless you unlocked it through the back or the bottom of the book. Maybe that explains why the, the feet were so thick. But this would have been right here. So I had a photo over... The secret compartment in the book. Oh, you guys are lucky. No Kathy today. This is Bowery, New York. Jay Wood photo. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. Oh, okay, that could be. That would make sense. 14, 15. The gun idea was better, but we'll take music box. So 15 photos in the album. So, nice album of Victorian photos. The book's a better story. Huh. It holds a kilo. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> oh, goodness.
So we're at 60 with Claudia. Yeah. And Claudia, just so you know, I have your registration. So you're always registered for us. Just so you, you have it and you know that you're always registered to bid in the auction. Breaker is out. Wow. Sorry, the box is really heavy that I was moving on the table. Just made everybody seasick. Kenneth is out. Hey, Gary, you're going to like the next item. So is everybody else. No Matthew Bailey bidding? No. That's surprising. That's Claudia. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That's what Scotty said, too. We're doing good. Except Pam's, you know, broker of a JJ. <laughs> Shut up, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Her box or another box had a fight. Her box lost. Ah, <laughs> uh. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Gonna leave a mark. <laughs> no, definitely not good. <laughs> Okay, we sold. I think we're sold. <laughs> sold to Claudia for 60. Nice. At least my husband's here yep. today, and I'll have to explain that to him. Okay, so I'm going to get... You guys can kind of see this right there. I'm going to get a tray. <laughs> Scotty. You guys just start bidding and, and have faith. Bid with faith, guys. Bid with faith. So $20 starting bid. Okay. The higher the bids go, the more pieces are going to get put in. But here's the presidential casino. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. Here is the Desert Sands Cabazon, $3 chips, five of those. Here is Desert Sands Cabazon, $1 chips. These are much older. Five of those. Trudy's Club. This was a underground casino. A couple of those. One, two, three. Fiesta Club. That's actually an old one. So this one is M M. Okay. Well, if they're going to do that, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys whatever's in this top drawer in this lot. And let's just – and I'm just going to do a count. But you'll get whatever's in the top drawer as the count, okay? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. So there's twenty-two. You're going to get everything in the top drawer. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So that's 41 pieces so far. 42, 43, 44, 46. 
50. That makes 50. There's 53. 56. 57, 58, 59, 66, 1, 62, 63. 64, 65, 66. Right, we ain't the mic there. 67, 68, 69, 70. Yeah, it was like 100 pounds moving it. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75. Arizona Club, 76, 77, 78. 79. That's one row. <laughs> 80 for Desert Sands. Then we're at 300 already. 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 7, 88, 89. 90, 91, 92, 93, 94. 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 2, 4, 5, 105, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, 10, 1, 11, 1, 12, 1, 13, 1, 14, 1, 15, 1, 16, 1, 17, 1, 18, 19, 120, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 29, 129 pieces so far. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. So there's 144 right there. Here is a different, this is a really good one. Edgewater, Edgewater, four, 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 five, four, six, four, seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, hundred and fifty-five, hundred fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, six, sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three, sixty-four. It's a different color of the Edgewater. Sixty-five, sixty-six. 67, this is PJ's, so it was an underground club, 58, 9, 60, what number was I at? What number was I at? So, so this is 170, this is a $500 chip, we'll say it's 170, so $500 chip, 171, 172, Hundred dollar chips, seventy three, seventy four, seventy five, seventy six, hundred and seventy seven. It's the nine twenty club. Seventy eight, seventy nine, hundred eighty, hundred eighty one, hundred eighty two, hundred eighty three, hundred eighty four, hundred eighty five, hundred eighty six, hundred eighty seven. You guys will get everything that's in the top drawer. 187, 188, 189, 190, 191, 192. 193, 194, 195, 96, 97, 98, 99, 200. Right there's 200, and I've only done two rows. There's two more rows of, of chips yet. 200. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So this is People's Choice. This is a rare casino. So that makes two hundred and eleven pieces right there. Two, four. That's two fifteen. Two twenty. Two twenty five. I should probably have Pam start counting some of these. 230. This is 230. 
249, 250, 252, 253, 254. Then there's these. These are Aladdin $5 chips in Las Vegas. So we're at 250, right? 254. Okay. So that's 260, 265. 267, 268, 69, 70, 71, 72, 273, 274, 275, 276, 277, 278, 279, 280, 281, 282, 283, 284, 285, 286, 287, 288 chips so far in this tray. 288. These are early, 288, 289, 290, 91, 92, 93, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 300. So that makes 300 chips. 303, 306, 307 chips right there. Here's 308. That one's a little newer. 300. All oh, these are from the Playboy Club. 309, 310, 311, 312, $100 one, 313, 14, 315, 316, 317, 318, 319. Restore Doctrine Pirate when you need them. 320, 321. These are. NYC, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 332, and I still have a whole other row to go. Three, and you can see, look, 332, that's the price that they had on each one of these people's choice chips. So 332, 333, 334, 335, 336, 37, 38, 39, 4, 342 chips so far there. Two. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. It's 356. 57, 358. 359, 360, 361, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 369, 370, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 381, 382, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, Two, three, and four, and five, ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, four hundred. There's four hundred chips there so far, and there's more. And I might have been wrong. The Rising Sun might not have been the Black Only Club. It might have been these, the People's Choice ones, just because of the number of them that I have. And I remember that they were supposed to be pretty valuable, because as you can see, they had had forty bucks a piece on these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, no, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So that's four hundred and twenty-one, right? Four hundred and twenty-one, four twenty-two. This is Kips Bay. Twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Four hundred and twenty-nine. Thirty. Through two, through three, through four, thirty-five. So four hundred and thirty-five. Four hundred and thirty-five. Thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one. Forty-two, for three, for four, for five, for six, forty-seven. Forty-eight. 
49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. This one is EDR. 58. Here's a different color, EDR. This is a $25 chip. 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. And 63, 464, 465, look, just one chip, 465, 466, 467, 468, 469, 470, 471, 472. There's 472. And those are, he helped write the price guide, so he knew what he was doing. 472, 473, 474, 475, 476, 477, 478, 479, 480, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 87, 88, 89. Okay, that's all of the chips from the first store. So 489 chips. That's what you get in the slot. 489 chips. And you can see the prices. See you, Phil. You know, that's one chip. 489. And there's that many of that chip. So 489 chips. Ten ten dollar bids at five hundred. Yeah, anything over a hundred is ten dollar increments. But, you know, the bid is the bid is what I'm holding in my hand. If not, you know, more. Okay. So four hundred and eighty nine casino chips, including these, which were they had them priced at forty bucks a piece. So, and there's probably 200 of those. I'd like to know if you could recount them. He missed some of your counting. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three. So, roughly 489. 800 was for Statworth. So, Mama G is always welcome here. And there's a bunch of these. I mean, there's probably over a hundred of the People's Choice chips. So this is a huge money maker for somebody. I just want to do something nice for everybody. We are um, eight hundred with Chris Stabler. So less than two dollars a chip shipped. It's a steal. <laughs> so eight fifty with Matthew Bailey. I couldn't believe that these were 130 bucks a piece, 125 a piece. Yeah. Six, nine of those. It's over a grand in just those chips. For Statworth is out. We're so, at 850 with Matthew Bailey. 489 chips. We're still not even at 200 bucks, or two dollars a chip. So this is a awesome deal. Oh, we got no snapper today either. No oh. snapper and no Kathy. Woo. You guys are getting steals. Chose the wrong day to do this. <laughs> Matthew just wants the MB chips. Okay, Matt, we can do that. We can take those out and sell it to you at your bid, and we'll sell the rest. <laughs> they range anywhere from $0.25 cent up to, I think there was a $500 chip. This one here, the the one that they had priced really high was a five dollar chip. Hotel El Rancho, something another, I think is what it says. Yeah, or L something. I can't really read it. <laughs> El Mercer. But not even two bucks a chip, guys. Bargains. Bargains for days here. 
$693. Okay, we're going to start counting it down. Yeah, that's very possible. I mean, that would explain. Oh, yep. Jim said that they are El Rancho Vegas. Jim, am I crazy? Putting 489 chips in, in one box and selling it all for one lot? Jim can't say yes because I bought the collection from him. And he is he was a chip collector and part of the collecting club. So if he says I'm crazy, then that makes him crazy too because he sold them all to me. Now I spent a lot more money, but and I think I think it's the People's Choice one with, that was the colored only club. <laughs> Last call, yes, Brian. <laughs> so eight hundred and fifty for four hundred and eighty nine chips. No. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, not. they'll yeah to get the real money out of it. You definitely gotta do the slow haul on them. But I like buying more stuff, so I gotta keep the money rolling. How much? Is We're eight hundred and fifty, Lenny. <laughs> We're at eight fifty. Four hundred and eighty nine casino chips. Your ears must have been ringing. So four hundred and eighty nine casino chips. Give it just a second. Wait, who who is the high bidder? Um, Matthew Bailey. Oh, phone died. Jim wants me to come down and spend more money with him. No, no, no. <laughs> Pam said I'm not allowed to buy anything else right now. We're at eight fifty high bid. Not today. Only one drawer today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's uh let's go ahead and whoever the high bidder is, let's go ahead and call it for them or Matthew Bell. Do it. <laughs> Spencer said if he paid that at auction he'd have to sleep under the under the house. <laughs> well imagine like this, if you only got five dollars a chip. You know, you'd be at almost twenty five hundred bucks. Sold, sold, sold to Matthew Bailey for eight fifty. Thank you, Matthew. Congratulations, Matt. Awesome lot. Oh yeah, but they yell at me because I don't sell enough stuff fast enough for everybody. So okay. So Dave broke apart some of our boxes of sports cards and filled these boxes. These boxes hold roughly. 2,800 to 3,000 cards. I have no clue what's in these because he was doing it. But we're going to start them out at 20 bucks because some of them have very shiny edges. They'll definitely be rookies and stars and everything else in these. Jeff Bagwell. So $20 start. You're getting almost 3,000 cards. Hey, Sarah and Jackie. See, you guys asked for cards yesterday, so we made you some cards for today. Who's that? Oh, Michael Crip. There's Bowman Chrome. Bartola Collin. Somebody the other day saw the, the lot that we had. I think you guys saw that. Look, there's a Sammy Sosa, Bowman's Best. I don't know if this is his rookie year or not. What year is Sammy Sosa's rookie, guys? There's a 1995 Sammy Sosa from Bowman's Best. That's probably a very good card. Roger Clemens, Cecil Fielder. There's one in the plastic. That's a Greg Maddox 
Leaf Elite something another. Ninety was Sammy Sosa's rookie. Okay. It only showed one year on it. That's why I wasn't sure. Will Clark, Juan Gonzalez, Ray Lankford, Joe Carter. Yep, they sold for eight hundred and fifty bucks. But there was four hundred and what was it? Four eighty nine. Yeah, so almost 500 chips. So it was a a bargain for sure. So I really have no clue what's in here because Pam's husband broke the lots apart. And... There's another Will Clark. It's really hard for me to read some of the names. I have to turn them over to read them. Billy Wagner, Larry Walker, right? David Cohn, I remember him. Ray Langford again. Greg Maddox, Manny Ramirez. Well, these are players that I've heard of. Strawberry, Abbott, Bell, Lankford, Clark. So these are all look to be early 90s on up into mid 90s. And remember, there's a whole. So these three rows you see right here on the top are just the top layer. There's a whole nother layer underneath that as well. See? There's. There's a total of six rows of cards. These are lenticular. Albert Bell, Ricky Henderson. We just fill them in these boxes because these boxes seem to be the most cost effective for shipping cards. Unless somebody knows of another way to ship cards for a reasonable rate, I would love to know because you know, it costs $19 to send one of these boxes. And so I've just been putting them in those boxes. Okay, Pam's gonna watch your bids. I'm gonna grab something cool while we got while we're on the sports card. Going back to the back of the warehouse. He's back digging in the boxes again. Jackie is out. <laughs> Tape them all together and call. We don't even want to ship books media right now. <laughs> they'll, yeah. they'll get there in the summertime if you're lucky. Okay, so we're at 80 with Andrew Storms.
what's funny is I could make 5,000 of these boxes. Oh, yeah, these are mixed. There will be football, baseball. It's mo There's a lot of football I saw in the box I made up. Yeah, we don't ship media too often either. <laughs> okay, are we sold? Sold, 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 Andrew Storm. Andrew Storm's 80 bucks. Okay, here you guys go. Let's do something interesting. Brian Maroney, you still here? Yeah. Okay, I think this is the last one I've got. Okay, so as you can see, this is a not for sale from Skybox. This is game worn, a bat used, and game worn jersey. So this is the hat, the bat, and the jersey. So this was the 300 Club. This is Carl Yastrzemski. These are uncut memorabilia cards. George Brett. George Brett, so this is a triple. This one's just the number. This one doesn't have any of the stuff. This one has all three pieces. This one has all three pieces. Game worn hat, game used bat, and game worn jersey. This one is just a game used bat and a game worn jersey. Game worn jersey, game used bat, and blank. Game worn hat. This one's game worn hat. This one's just the bat, just the bat. Jersey, Jersey, and then blank. So these are all Carl Yastrzemski and George Brett. Let's see, uh, if I don't destroy them. Right there, from 2000. These were from Fleer and Skybox. This is an uncut sheet of memorabilia cards. This is awesome. The fact that they have all three pieces of memorabilia, the game-worn hat, the baseball bat, and the jersey. $20 start on the uncut sheet. Okay, hey, Brian Maroney's in at 20. Scotty's in at 22. Let you guys bid before I call out anything. You guys saw the ones yesterday that were only like six pieces and only had just a jersey. Some of these have jersey, a hat, and a baseball bat piece. So they're triple memorabilia cards. And it's all Carl Yastrzemski and George Brett. Uncut sheet, we're at 55 with Scotty. Where'd Spencer go? We lost Spencer. <laughs> nope, they're not numbered on the back. I think because these are still from the factory and they never were released... They didn't go through the stamping machine to number them because they would have been insert cards so they would have got special numbering. But Sarah and Jackie should like these. So you can see that inside of the, of the 3000 right there is the piece of the game-worn hat. That is a piece of baseball bat, and that is a piece of their jersey. So they're memorabilia cards. I think it's interesting that they say September 30th of 1992. So maybe that was the date that he wore and used the pieces that they bought to take apart. My favorite one, I, I like Yastrzemski, so... But you're looking at 6, 12, 18 cards total from the 3,000 club, including triple memorabilia cards. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sarah and Jackie wouldn't even know who these players are. 
These are old timers. Carl Yastrzemski and George Brett. Yesterday we had Jerry Rice and Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith, but you guys, you guys weren't around. So we're at 110 with Scotty, 125 with Matt Conlon. Vivid is out. Oh, that's the date they hit their 3,000. Okay. Yeah, yesterday, yesterday, Jackie, there was a Troy Aikman jersey card on an uncut sheet. Uh, it was six cards on the sheet. Jerry Rice, Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith. I can't remember who else it was. I think Spencer bought it. Either Brian Maroney or Spencer bought it. So Brian bought that one. So we have Spencer at 145. Yeah. So we have Scotty in at 155. No, Jerry Rice when he was on the 49ers, and the card was multicolored. So it had a, it was a multi, a multicolor jersey card. Just because you never know what we're going to find in the warehouse. And sometimes we find stuff, and I just bring it up for sale, and... Brian Maroney, can I tease her with it? Can I tease Jack? Okay, while you guys are bidding on that one, I'm going to show this just to Jackie and Sarah. So there's the Jerry Rice. There's the Ed McCaffrey. There's the Emmett Smith. There's the Troy Aikman. Charlie Batch. And Mark Brunel. That was the one that Brian Maroney bought. See, look, multicolored. That was awesome. Yeah, if you can get these graded, I'm sure there's nobody else that has them. Because I got these from a guy that used to work at Skybox whenever they closed, whenever they went out. Spencer will never be homeless. He can go up and live in a storage unit bought by Jack and, and Mike. <laughs> so we have Spencer at 165. See, there you go, Brian Maroney. You got a buyer right there. You can contact Jack and Sarah. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, we got all kinds of random craziness in the warehouse. But I told you guys, I'm going to bring everything to auction. Yeah, Tammy's usually around, so if there's something you want to see. 
Yeah, I think I think if you could get that to Heritage, it would bring stupid money. I just don't have time to do it. Like, I mean, I have thousands of items that could be sent out to Heritage. I have original Kiss posters with the original artwork used to make them. You know, the poster sells for six to eight hundred bucks, and I have the original artwork used to create the poster. I mean, they're probably eight or ten thousand bucks a piece. They're just sitting in the back of the warehouse. Okay, are we sold? Is Dave trying to make your box feel better in there? Yep. What's up, Joey Bada Bing? Let's go. Okay, so this uncut sheet of cards sold for 165 dispenser. <laughs> Spencer, I have to tell you, if I had an uncut sheet of base set Charizards, those I would wait on and they would be going through some friends of mine at Dave and Adam's card world. Okay. So you guys are putting on cards. Let's do here's another box of cards. Roughly about three thousand pieces. I think this one is a lot of football if I remember right. So lots of football in this one. I think these are 94. Yep, 94 football upper deck. Saw Bowman. Um, there's the whatever the ones are that are embossed. So there's Brett Favre, it looks like. Yep, Brett Favre. Ronnie Lott. So roughly 3,000 cards, I don't, you know. 2,700 to 3,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. Edge. The problem with the cards is, like in the boxes, it takes me so long to make them because I guess over time they get like real stuck together because they're tight in the boxes. And from just sitting for years and years and years in storage, they have gotten to the point where they're like, some of them are like bricks that are like this thick. And I literally have to crack them apart just to sit there and take each card apart. So $20 start on this lot. Okay, we have treasure hustlers in at 25. What did Kyle say? I'm trying to see what these tips are. Oh, that's awesome. Nice, Spencer. Uh, Brian Maroney, no, they're not all 1994. It's a little mix of everything, but there was a lot of 1994. So... I think that's his rookie year, right? Let's see. In yeah, 94. That is Isaac Bruce's rookie year. I don't know why that one's gold colored and all the other ones are silver. Boomer Esiason. There was 93s. There's some Ricky Waters. And again, so it's like six, six rows because there's Three on top and three underneath. I guess I should learn cards well enough to just make a list of baseball, basketball, and football and then put a year and then just put like who the best people were. Yeah, I think they're 
I think they're 91 through about 96 or 97, Brian, in this box. Brian Maroney, who would that 95 player be? Let me see if, if it's who I think it is. We're talking football, right? We're talking Brady, I think. That was his rookie year. <laughs> Maroney's in at 50. Yeah, you really can't miss out. I mean, it's 3,000 cards. Oh, it's Terrell Davis. I have an unopened pack of... If you guys watched the sports card video where I had like the sets and the unopened boxes, um, that one box was $3,000 that I had of Upper Deck SP football. That was That's what it was. It was $2,000 because there's like a $10,000 Brady card that can come out of those packs. I actually have an unopened pack in the office. I was going to save for an opening video and just do a video where I open that pack here randomly or I give it to somebody else and they have to do an opening with it. I don't know. We'll see. It's just sitting on my desk. It's been there for five months. All right. Okay. So we have... We're at 55. We're at 60 with Vivid. Throw it in your box. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Those packs go for like 150 bucks a pack. And I'm like, eh, should I sell it for 150 bucks or should I open it on camera? I'm leaning towards opening it on camera. So we're at 65 with Sarah and Jackie. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously I like money, but... But I do think that would be fun. We can definitely open it on video. We'll do, a, we'll do an opening. That is a good idea. Once I hit 2,500 subs, that'll be my 2,500 sub video. I'll open the pack on video and whoever makes comments in the video, I'll use a random generator and they'll get whatever cards are in the pack. That would be fun. <laughs> so we're at 75 with vintage treasures. Hey, Paul. I haven't seen you for a while. We're going to do something really cool next. <laughs> oh, trust me, Spencer, you're not, you know, preaching to the choir. That storage unit I bought out and when I lived in Hawaii I just had unopened boxes of magic. I had 5,000 count boxes from 1996, 97, maybe even 95. I bought it in 97. I had 5,000 count boxes of magic cards. And I think there was some Pokemon in there, but I was like, oh, nobody wants this kid's game. I was selling 5,000 count boxes out at Aloha Stadium for 10 bucks a box. Okay, we have Vintage Treasures in at 75. Sorry. Anyway. Oh, yeah. And I'm talking like, you know, I had a 10 by 15 storage unit full from a card shop. I could have bought a house for what I gave away at the time. Sold. Sold. Sold, sold, sold. 
Paul, you missed it. I did uh I did four hundred and eighty nine casino chips. Like vintage nineteen thirties and forties casino chips. I did a whole drawer full and sold them all as one lot. Okay. For those of you who are here earlier in the week, so I, I have car brochures from a dealership that I bought out in Michigan. So it shows all the different colors, the different styles, the different upgrades that you can buy and get in your car, the different interiors. So these are how they used to sell you cars. So 1972 Chevrolet Caprice Impala and Bel Air. We have I'm trying to okay. So these are Vegas, so Chevy Vegas. And look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen of the Vega ones. Here are three 1975 Camaro. Harbourshers. I just got all their ephemera. 1974 Vegas. Here's a bunch of those. So this is a nice big lot. Showed you the different colors that were available, the station wagons, the Jeep. ET. Here are 1974 Chevelles. So 1974 Chevelle. So we have 1975 Camaro in there. Let's see. Here's some 1979 Camaro. 1979 Camaro. Z28. The Rally Sport. All the schematics. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's 1976 Camaro. So 1976 Camaro showing all the different stuff. Here's, these are all 76 Camaro. Now I'll give you guys a quick count and then we'll see where we're standing. Three, five, six, seven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. 6, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 6, 37, 38, 39. There's 40 of the 1976 Camaro. So there's 40 of that one. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the 1979 Camaro. So 8 of that one. Grab these ones. Three of the nineteen seventy-five. So that's fifty-one pieces right there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-three Chevelles. So that's twenty-three and fifty-one. 74, can you remember that? 74. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen, seventy four 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 1974 Vegas. So 74 would be 89. So just remember 89 now. Two, three, four. 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five. So there's another 25, so that means 94, 114 pieces in this lot. Roughly 100, we're going to say 110 just in case I miscounted something. But So there's 110 carbursers, old stock. You're not 90 with Kiki. Okay. Maybe to make Claudia and Kiki. Okay. If anybody else is going to come in, make sure you do so quickly. So we are at 90 with Kiki, and there's 114 original carbishers from the 70s, including a bunch of Camaro. So we're at 100 with Claudia Rose, Benjamin. We're at 120 with Jim Boyles. One forty with Claudia. Rose. Oh, we have Kiki in at 130. Jim Boyles came in at 150. So for 150 or 114 carbershers. 200 with Jim. Definitely bringing you guys wholesale lots today. So we're at 200 with Jim. For sure. My grandpa had one of those like Boats, those big square Oldsmobiles. 225 with Claudia Rose, 250 with Jim Boyles. Kiki is out. So it's just between Claudia Rose and Jim Boyles. So it says out. The other one will win it. Hey, Punisher. So we have 250 with Jim Boyles looking for 260 or more or an out from Claudia. Claudia is out. Sold to Jim Boyles, $250. Congratulations, Jim. Okay, let's do, I know, I know, I know Kathy Bauer's not here, so we're going to give other people their shot that are here today. Another great vintage photo album. You can see it's got like a celluloid cover with embossed floral design. I don't see what's in these until Pam puts them up here. So this is a loving memory card uh, for Edith Moulton, who died January 1st of 1899. Oh, she was only three months old. So it was for a baby. That's sad. Okay. Forestville, New York. Is that one? 20 bucks. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, these are all sad. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 
19, 20, 21. Wow, look at that beard. 22, 23, 24. These are real early. So there's 24 pieces in this in this book. These are real early. CDVs here. So 24 total pieces. Main. Winthrop Main. Oh, yeah, Stryker's not here either. This one tells you on the back who it was. That's another remembrance card. Died May 5th, 1891. She was 80 years old. Eliza Stanley, so they're probably sisters, died at 85, died in 1924. This one is from Winthrop, Maine. This one's from Buffalo, New York. One is from Belfast, Maine. Look at that beautiful, like inlaid on the bottom. Toodle Studio. I wonder if that's him. Yeah. WC Tuttle. So very, very famous photographer. It's WC Tuttle. You can see there the picture of the old camera, the fairies taking pictures on the back. It's really beautiful. It's a really nice book. I had brought it over to show for show and tell for Jackie and Sarah. Oh, we have all this other stuff over here that you had me look through today to decide if we could sell it or not. Of course we can. Okay, so we're just waiting to hear from Claudia. So we're at 100 with Kiki. Claudia, let us know if you're out or 105. Or 110, I'm sorry. 110 with Claudia, thank you. He's like, is it supposed to be blue on the tip? One twenty with Kiki. One thirty with Claudia. One forty five with Kiki. Kiki jumps at fifteen. So looking for one fifty five.
And we do appreciate everybody being here today. Thank you all for being here. 155 with Claudia. 175 with Kiki. We will be doing some cool movie stuff I'll do a few minutes. So we're at 175 with Kiki and Claudia is out. Okay, let's sell it to Kiki. Kiki for 175. Congratulations, Kiki. It's a beautiful book, especially with that subtle photo in it. Okay. Next, let's do these. Pam handed me these earlier and said, here, should we do these? She's like, I know you like to sell these, but I was like, yeah, let's do them. Okay, so these are postcards. Um, guessing like 60s, 70s, probably early 80s. I haven't really looked at them. That one's early 90s there. This one's foreign. Budapest. So $20 start on this lot. 1978. That one I can't make out. It's early, early 80s. Can't read that one either. The stamps, the foreign stamps seem to be a little harder to read. So there's anything from religious to scenic. A lot of Budapest, 1986. This one's actually got a piece of copper on the front of it. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if that means 1976, I think, maybe. But 20 bucks, you get the whole lot. August 13th of 70-something. So there's some real photos, also kind of mixed in. But it is a huge amount. I mean, you know, for example, this is three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 22, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Look at this one. 40, 41, 42, 43. So here is roughly 50 postcards. And we'll add some more to it just to say it's 50. So there's roughly 50. So there's 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. So there's roughly 400 postcards in this box. And then this box is probably a tremendous amount as well. All postcards. Now, I think most of these ones are unused, the way it looks. So there's probably 800 to 1,000 postcards in this lot. These are all places in the U.S. Rocky Mountain, here's some Florida oranges, Colorado, Las Vegas, the Las Vegas, it's cool. Summit of Pikes Peak in Colorado, Texas. Yeah, 
Okay, then let's see this one. I'll pull that one up and show that one to you in just a second. University of New Mexico, Grand Ole Opry House, Chattanooga, Crappy Rock. Grand Canyon, Arizona. And there's still more inside the bottom of the box. Look at that. Alice in Wonderland from Disneyland. Like Arizona, Jerome, Arizona. Ghost Town. So it's a bunch. Bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Like I said, there's probably 800 to 1,000 postcards. Here's some books that have multiples in it. Another book that has Budapest photos in it. Chicago. But a lot of vintage postcards, all for one money. You can see them all that way. Okay, lots of postcards. Let's see where we're at. Okay, we have 70 with Kiki. We have 80 with Stryker. We have 90 with Kiki. I'm trying to move stuff around here. So... Yeah, and I didn't really dig through these. I know that some of these can be good, like the uh, Las Vegas. Here's It's a Small World from Disneyland. Um, this is more Vegas. Sears Tower. Wrigley Building. Some more Casino. Some random, who knows where they're from places. That one's a lenticular. Las Vegas again. The old Las Vegas. Oranges. Grand Ole Opry. Yeah, there's some neat stuff in here. These came out of that house, didn't they? The fabric house, I think. Because I see a lot of Budapest. Four in here. Chinatown, Toronto, Canada. Pam is back. I get to look at this stuff now. <laughs> O'Hare International Airport. I think this one's really funny. Look. The guy's driving around on a little Best Western space shuttle. That's pretty cool. Cornhusker State. Pennsylvania, Ocean City, lots and lots of cards. Kidron, Darvis, Yvonne, Romeo, and Julia. Okay, we sold. Okay. Sold, sold, sold. Sold, sold, sold. 135. Kiki, congratulations. Okay. What was in those other boxes? Okay. Oh, these are like sunglasses and regular glasses. 
questions. They're like plasticky ones. They say Charles on the outside. You know, 70s-ish looking. So there's one pair. Here's another pair. This is Sophistic. Sophistic. 20 bucks. 20 bucks for whatever's in these two boxes. I don't know who made these, but they are funky looking. They're bifocals. Uh, can't read anything on that one. It says Taiwan. A great shakes there. Okay. So there's those. The vintage glasses there. And then these are more vintage glasses. These are Terry Brog Brog Brogan. Brogan. I don't know. Very 70s looking sunglasses. The Lucite framing. 70s, 80s, I don't know. Not my thing. These look like chips. Uh, Foster Grant. These are Foster Grant Aviator glasses. These can be good. Sorry, they're dusty. So these are Foster Grant aviator style sunglasses. Those are kind of neat. These are some scary big glasses. Can't really read those. They say DGR TOZ87. Not that I know what that means. This pair's a little cooler looking. But I don't think these are marked anything. These aren't marked anything. I see you, Scotty. It's only box you're in. But the Foster Grants are cool. I like sunglasses. Oh, these are cool, too. These also look like aviator sunglasses. They're a little dusty, as you can see. Dusty. These have, like, a cool design at the top. They're not actually screws. It's the design. But I don't see any markings on these either. Hmm. Yeah, don't know. But we'll do all the glasses together. And I'll give you whatever else is in that other box over there. Let's see what this one is. Oh, so it looks like cigarette stuff. Look, that one even has a cigarette in it. Look. The old pack. Do not smoke the cigarette. This is a sealed pack of whatever that is, export A. Here is a, a full box of Prince Albert crimp cut. And this is 10. So a pocket 10. No, it's not, you know, a Prince Albert. This is the Prince Albert. <laughs> Pam wants you to have a Prince Albert too. Here's another one. This one's, this one, you can see it still has the tobacco inside. So there's, and these are beautiful in shape. These are early. Pipe. Pipe. What, this? No, this is pipe tobacco. Is Actually, it says cigarette tobacco, but long burning pipe and cigarette tobacco on those two. This one says cigarettes. This is to hold a. Oh, okay. Here, let, let him just bid on the glasses then. He was already bidding on them before I added something else to it. So we're just doing the glasses. So who was bidding on the glasses? Dottie, 24. Who's that? Who said I'll give you 24? Right, so no, I'll just do the glasses. You guys are right. I added it too fast. <laughs> so we'll just do it. We'll just do the glasses first. 
We'll just do the glasses first, guys. Sorry about that, Scotty. So just doing the glasses, the Foster Grant, Aviators, all the other stuff. I just didn't think there was going to be a lot of interest, and I didn't turn around and look. So. so just the glasses. We're just doing the glasses. Scotty's is out, so that would be Scotty. So we'll, we'll say Scotty at 20, right? Because Scotty was in at 22. On the glasses. The, oh, okay, on the glasses. So Jebby was in on the glasses at 22. Okay. That's why he said 24. Okay. So 24 for Scotty. Is your refrigerator running? Better go catch it. Okay, so 24. Scotty sold. I don't know. Are we... Guys, you're bidding on the glasses only, so... It was just Scotty and Jebby. Jebby went out. <laughs> Spencer. Okay, so everybody else is out on the glasses. Scotty's happy at 24. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, guys. I should have looked back and looked. Okay, 24 sold, Scotty. So, okay, so sold to Scotty for 24 okay. on the, the glasses. Yep. Okay. Now you can do your pot. My pot. Okay. Okay, so you guys saw what was in there for the the cigarette and tobacco stuff. So that's what you're bidding on. Cigarette and tobacco stuff. I got you, Scotty. Don't worry. There. I'm a little confused. Yeah. This <laughs> is all the miscellaneous stuff on the table right now, other than cards and what photos. So you're you're buying the tobacco stuff, the tobacco tins. I didn't even get to finish showing everybody what was in it. Okay, so here is a lighter. No flint. Uh, by Supreme. It's got Florida on it. Get that. There are two of these. I'll, I'll open one of them. They are old stock. Probably s just like small. That one has a plant. I see a couple sparks. LDL lighters. So there's two of those. I know it's really sad, but here's the, uh, I guess you put a cigarette in that and use it to smoke your cigarettes. But here's some old matches, and they are complete. They have all the stuff inside of them. From Kernick, New York. These are probably 50s or 60s. South City Service from Vickers. Gold Tone Enlargements, 1961. Here is Charter House Restaurant. And they do have all the, the matches inside and stuff. It's from some kind of a bank in Wisconsin. $10 start on this whole lot. And what's in this? Danbury Mint, some kind of a Norman Rockwell figurine. Yeah, Norman Rockwell. Porcelain figurine from Danbury Mint. So that's what you're getting in this lot. This was all the miscellaneous stuff on the table, kind of. Okay, there we go. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Yep, Chris, it's the the Danbury Mint statue. There is paperwork down inside as well for it. From Rockwell, the rivals, Danbury Mint. Figurine 1980. And these are full. Well, one of them is completely full. The other one looks like it might have had a little bit used out of it. 26 for Chris Law, 28 for Stryker, 32 for Chris Law. I'll get a tray so we can put all that on a tray. Just so we can keep track. Next, I'll do, uh, let's see. 
cool movie lot. Count it down. Yep, count it down. 32 with Chris Law. Mm -hmm. I think some of the match books are good. Let's try a few of those. I figured it's okay if I put this stuff back in the box there. A couple of lighters. A third lighter. There we go. Hey, everybody. Probably. I'll tell you, every time my wife gives me something to deal with, you know, one of her, her crazy pills, she gives me like a half of one and I'm loopy for days. <laughs> I'm not one who believes in all that stuff, so I'm like very... You know, a little out of it today. Yeah. <laughs> you got too much sleep too. <laughs> yeah, I I never get like eight hours of sleep. I got eight hours of sleep last night. Okay, we're in a forty with Oki. Going once. I'm gonna as soon as they they make it legal, I'm gonna be the first person selling weed on, on YouTube, uh -huh. auctions. Going twice. We got some purple haze. Twice. Sold, sold, sold. Sold, sold, sold. Congratulations, Oki. Oki, I know you're registered, but I don't know if you're registered because of T. If you are, just send me a registration also. That way I don't have to bother T while she's uh, sorting through her storage units of millions of items. I'm trying to... Keep it where she can. Mm. There we go. There you go. Okay. So here's this and this. And then I'm going to do one lot after that of movie stuff. So let's see what's in these. Uh, Absolute Divas Wrestling cards oh so i guess it's just wrestling cards in general that includes all the 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 like i guess insert sets maybe is that what they are okay so yeah all the wrestling cards all oh, these are actually cool so it looks like they're from a different couple different sets so these are wwf ultra ultimate diva collection so, and then you have, these are Ultimate Diva Collection 2 ring presents. There. So it might be a full set, because that's number 64. 62, 64. 65, I don't know where 63 is. So wrestling cards, and then these are WrestleMania, looks like 19, WrestleMania 19 cards. I don't know if these are inserts or if they're just regular cards. So a nice lot of wrestling cards. Clear 2003 is when they're from, or at least the ones that I just saw. Has 
Road to the Ring. So I don't know if any of these are inserts or not. Famous rides. But there's a bunch of wrestling cards. There was China. There. Here's some with like funky signature things on them. Grandmaster Sexy, Godfather. So that must be another different set. So there's a lot of cards in here. Okay, so you get that, and then you get whatever this is. Heineken Baseball Danglers. Tin in a carton. Sorry, it bothers me. I want to see what it is. Yeah. I'm trying to pass away. Oh, look at this. Uh, this is an original display box. Here are the tin hangers. Look at this. And these are the Heineken baseball signs. They would hang in the bar in 1998. So they would hang like this. And there's this box holds 10 of them. So there's 10 Heineken baseball beer-related store display hangers, plus the wrestling cards. So that's what you're getting. Great reseller lot right here. Jabby yeah, in at 22, hi there. So we're at 22 with Jabby. 24 with Stryker. Nice, Spencer. So we're at 24 on this lot. Like I said, I think the Heineken baseball hanging displays because there's 10 of them in that box. So you get all 10 like Heineken beer signs, I guess is what I would call them. They're cardboard, Brian. They're like a, yeah, like a cardboard. And there's 10 of them. Normally, if you see green balls with red, you should see a doctor. But in this case. Okay. Okay, no problem. Javi is out. So we have 50 with Stryker. There's 10 of the Heineken baseballs and then the whole book of wrestling cards. Whole book. From a whole bunch of different sets. Okay, so we're going to give it a going once. Uh, Spencer, yes, sometimes I do actually. You mean like the Japanese imports? Because I have, I think I still have my PS1 that was modded. Because at one point I bought from a guy that had a, a store, I bought one of every PlayStation game made. The imports and the American. But, you know, he used to burn them. He would burn and mix them. So probably 2,000 of the 6,000 games I have were were burned copies. Yeah, just send me an email, Spencer. Send me some pictures. Yeah, just send me some pictures in my email. Okay, I think we're going to be sold. Nice buy striker. I think you should be able to get 20 bucks a piece for the Heineken baseballs. Yeah, 
Okay, cold. Well, here, put your pants or put your hands right here. <laughs> That's my belly. Okay, let's do uh, some vintage movie poster stuff. Okay, so these are inserts. So I'll put three of them up. We're going to do three in a lot. I don't know which three because I'm just literally grabbing them from the stack. Okay, so let's see what we got. 1965, The Secret of Blood Island. Ooh. Till the secret is told. Barbara Shelley, Pat Weimark, Charles Tingwell. So very cool. And these measure, I believe they're about 36 inches tall. So they're considered inserts or half sheets. 36 inches by 14 inches wide, so 36 by 14. So The Secret of Blood Island is the first one. Adventure 40 fathoms down in the shark-infested waters that hide the secret of the Purple Reef. Peter Falk was in this one. Cool. This one is 1960. And then the last one is awesome. The Return of Mr. Moto, starring Henry Silva, Terrence Longdon, and Suzanne Lloyd. This is 1965. So you are getting all three. $20 start. Well, let's go. $40 with Striker. Striker jumps in there. He knows what he likes and likes what he knows. He goes bid while I write. Okay. <laughs> so we're at 40 with Striker, and you do get all three original inserts, posters. Oh, cool, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you for that information. So we're at 40 so far, looking for 42 for all three posters. You get all three. Any advance on 40 bucks? It's going to be a bargain. Me too, but somebody said I have to send the invoices to <laughs> Okay, we're going once, going twice. Forty four with striker. No, oh, forty four striker. You should be doing it. Yeah, wide awake. Comic shops. And Kyle, yeah, I'll check with my friends that own the, the comic shop up the road. I can probably order, you know, 100 of them. 40 with Kenneth, 50 with Stryker. You going to stay in send invoices? Are you sure? You don't have to. <laughs> Kenneth is out. So 50 with Stryker. Hey, going once. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. If you and your husband take off on the same day, it's bad. <laughs> Slow your roll, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's selling it to the people today. Selling it. Got to buy my son his his Apple computer for college.
silver hair stacker said why don't women ever get flogged it's always the men because from secret of blood island it's, it talks about the men getting flogged and silver hair the simple answer is because they haven't came to my red room yet After she said sold. Okay. Don't worry, Snapper. There's more. How about the rat race with Tony Curtis and Debbie Reynolds? That one's fantastic. 1960. So we're going to do a $20 start. There's going to be three of them. The rat race with Debbie Reynolds and Tony Curtis. Oh, look. You don't just get one of that fantastic poster. You get two. So the rat race, Tony Curtis and Debbie Reynolds and Jack Oakey. And what else do we got here? Ooh, another good one right on the top. Look at that. Three good ones all in a row. Charlton Heston and Elsa Martin Martinelli, the pigeon that took Rome from 1962. So two from 1960 and one from 1962. Lot We're on lot number 24, just so you know. <laughs> that was 23. <laughs> yep, that was 23. Yep, we're on lot number 24. There you go. <laughs> Shraker in a 20. It was probably because of the glasses mix-up thing. These three are awesome. 35 with Claudia Rose. <laughs> 38 with Stryker. I agree with that, Kyle. Stryker with 38. Yeah, he needs he needs the new M1 ship, I believe, because he's going to be he's going to school for engineering, so he has to run AutoCAD on it. So it's going to require him to have a really good graphics card and a lot of RAM, as well as processing power. He's actually just going to live there, his girlfriend. Don't lie, Brian. Yeah, well, that's probably what he's going to do. <laughs> so a striker in at 38. There are two of the rat race and one of the Charlton Heston pigeon that took Rome. So you guys see, here we go. I love the fact that it has Tony Curtis and Debbie Reynolds in it. 42 with Snapper, Striker is out, Kenneth is out. Wow. You guys are giving up easy on these. Can you pretend you listen to heavy metal music when you do that? If I did that right now, I'd fucking fall over. <laughs> I just wanted to see you do that. My head would fall off. You didn't get it. You're supposed to be like this. I know. I'm going to stab you with this pen if you don't leave me alone. <laughs> 45 with Claudia. Snapper is Snapper's out. out. Oh, 15 bucks a piece shipped. It's a good, good buy. I love the the pigeon took Rome because if you look all the little German soldier helmets in the truck, it's pretty funny. So this is number twenty four, right? Oh, 
wants going. <laughs> gonna get hollered at again, Brian. <laughs> For what? <laughs> Rushing, going toy. I know. Jeez. It's <laughs> waiting to get flogged. Okay. Okay, lot number 25, last lot of the day. Is no down payment from 1957. Joanne Woodward, Tony Randall, Cameron Mitchell, Jeffrey Hunter, Patricia Owens, Sherry North, Pat Hingle, and Barbara Rush is in this one. So Tony Randall, awesome, and Joanne Woodward. So that's your first one. Next one is 1959, so these are 50s. Carol Baker, Roger Moore. Uh, let's see, anybody else? I know, Walter Slezak. 1959, The Miracle. And then last but not least in this lot, Marietta. The Avenger who scoured all of El Dorado by Jeffrey Hunter and Arthur Kennedy, 1965. So those are the three you're bidding on in this lot. We're at 45. This is the last lot of the day, guys. We do appreciate everybody being here. And obviously, I will be sending out invoices today for all three days' auctions. Make sure that you guys share us out to others. I'm trying to grow the channel. Goal is to hit 5,000 subs by the end of the year. And we are going to have lots of great stuff, including original one-sheet posters and all kinds of other amazing items coming. That I don't even know what's in the boxes in the back of the warehouse. But on your way out, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. We do appreciate it. Because you guys are fantastic. So give yourself a thumbs up by giving us a thumbs up. We have Claudia in at 50. We have Snapper in at 57. Snapper jumps in at 57. And obviously, if you guys are within driving distance of the warehouse and you're interested in buying truckloads, you hit me up. We will sell you large quantities wholesale. Because I am offered deals all the time. There's actually a deal out in Ohio that we probably will be going and looking at. That is a three-story building full of toys and die cast and collectibles. So who knows what will happen there. But if Pam hears me talk about it, she will stab me. So again, everybody, everybody have a great day. I believe this is going to be sold to Snapper at 57. And I do appreciate everybody spending their day with me. It's awesome. You guys are fun. I hope I make you guys laugh at some point with some of my dumb jokes. No. Um, so far, I haven't heard back from them, Striker. I made them an offer. They have until the 30th of this month to move out. So... I haven't heard anything. I'm kind of hoping that I do. But if I don't, the three-story warehouse of other stuff is much better anyway. So I'm hoping that that's what comes through. Again, thank you, everybody. Oh, Mama G, it's no problem. That was lot number 25. 
Yes, no worries. We have it all. Oh, yep, flipping. For, oh, is it on uh, auctions for you? Okay, so tomorrow, auction at noon on auctions for you with T. She did just get five storage units full of awesome collectibles and antique stuff and sports stuff and some just all-around cool collectible stuff. So make sure you guys check her out as well. And then we will see everybody next week. I will try to drop a video over the weekend or early next week with some other interesting content. So I will see everybody later on your way out. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. And I appreciate everything from everyone. And hopefully you guys got some great deals today and make a ton of money. Whoever got the poker chips is going to make a lot of money on those. Even at five bucks a piece, they're going to, you know, they're going to make $2,000 in profit. So hope you guys make out and have a great weekend. This is Brian Davis, Mr. Buys a Lot. Pam is in the office with her other husband. She said bye. So we'll see everybody later. Everybody have a great night.